Good evening and welcome to the Selectman's meeting for Thursday, March 26th, 2015. We have an early meeting tonight because we had a revised agenda and our agenda tonight, as you're here, is very short and we wanted to give the employees a chance to uh, get home early. So our, our agenda tonight is approval of minutes, questions from the public regarding items not on the agenda, to open the 2015 annual town meeting warrant to withdraw an article, appointments, and then the adjournment. Before we start, I'm going to take something out of order. The uh, questions from the republic, from the public, regarding items not on the agenda. Last week we had an incident where a person cast an aspersion or made negative remarks about one of our employees. We've had that happen before. People have been warned. We have two choices. Remove this from the agenda, which I do not want to do, or if this ever happens again, and I'm going to assume it does not, you will be gaveled down and, and removed from the room. We cannot have this happen. Um, we have wonderful employees. They don't deserve this treatment. So I'll leave it at that, and when we go to our 7 o'clock meeting next week, I'll make a similar statement. Okay? Okay. Approval of minutes. Do we have any minutes we're ready to do? If we do, are we ready to vote on it, Paul? I'm ready to vote. You should. Okay, I'm fine with your comments. I wanted to put in a couple, but I didn't get a chance. So I'm living, uh, yours are fine. I think we'll move, I'll move to approve the uh, minutes of April, uh, March 12th, 2015, as revised. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I oppose, and I introduce into the record the March 12th, 2015 minutes as written. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is to open the warrant to withdraw an article, and the article we're going to withdraw is Article II, Use of Conservation Land for Agricultural Purposes, and then we will close the warrant. We had an excellent meeting with the Conservation Commission on Monday night. I lose track of time. It was Monday. Uh, it was Monday night and a large contingent of the neighbors came. It was a very good discussion. I want to applaud the Conservation Commission and especially recognize Abby Pearsall for a very good and concise PowerPoint presentation that she had for everyone. Um, it clarified a lot of things. Um, it also highlighted the sensitivity of the area down in South Hingham. Um, the neighbors were most upset that they, many of them were finding out about it almost sitting there. So it was very, very good hearing. I'll ask for comments from, actually Paul was there. This Paul was not. Uh, but Conservation Commission withdrew the article from this year's town meeting and I'm sure we'll see it back next year. So Paul? I, I don't know if my Do you want to senior end? colleague had a comment. If not, I... I, I have an observation, but I'd rather hear a comment from someone who was there. Okay, sure. I, I just want to have respect for my senior colleague. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I want to first um, want to thank the Conservation Commission for hosting us on Monday. Uh, it was much appreciated and um, it, with much humility and, um, and grace, you know, they, 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 they listen to the folks. Uh, they're very sensitive to the concerns and, um, uh, you know, I'm for, you know, for, for one, would just like to say, you know, I know that it, there were a few folks that had some um, strong words, but uh, I think the, the, the sense of the meeting uh, was that uh, we will keep a dialogue going, that we work together, and um, I think that was the right thing to do to withdraw it. Uh, there, was, there was one of my neighbors who had a list of about 15 questions, and it was one of those scenarios where I think everyone agreed, especially the commission, that we're not going to be able to get through all this. That there's obviously plenty of issues to be talked about, and um, I want to also thank the neighbors because um, I know with busy lives and busy schedules, with children and sports and work, and I, I was really pleased to see that not only the people who, who lived right there all along Sentinel and, and Richard Road, 
but all the other uh, budding roads that obviously could be affected by whatever's put there, people showed up. It was really, really um, a great thing to see, and I appreciate them coming in because I think the commission was, you know, it's, it's important being sitting on commissions and committees uh, over time. I think it's important that they, they get a sense of the, the, the um, concerns of the neighbors, not just for a couple of people, you know, but, but maybe 20 or 25 or more, depending on who can make it. So I really appreciate uh, the neighbors coming out, and uh, I look forward to working with the commission in the future and the neighbors to, uh, to make that area and keep it uh, such a, a wonderful spot for, for all of us. Mr. Healy. Um, I know we got these proposed warrant articles in January, and I know it's just cow corn, but it would have been nice if we had jumped on this uh, so that we could perhaps have the time to plug in some of the uh, questions that were raised. Uh, but having said that, if there's a perception that uh, a warrant article isn't ready for prime time at town meeting, whether it's cow corn or something more aggressive. Um, I think discretion is the better part of valor. Pulling it back makes a lot of sense. Um, it's, it's good to get questions on articles addressed before town meeting as much as you can. Some people are just gonna disagree no matter what. Um, but if you have the, the vetting that is necessary to make it go through smoothly, it's more likely that that will happen. So, uh, One thing I'd like to point out, uh, this article went through the advisory committee mm. without any recognition of impacts on the neighbors at all. So I have to say I'm glad we did recognize that because it would not have been a pretty picture on town meeting floor. Well, one of the things that uh, I took away from my experience with uh, the Scotland Street Sentinel Liberty Road neighborhood in the 90s um, while working on the permitting there was the thoughtful and respectful dialogue that occurred um, even with a project that was perceived with uh, skepticism and hostility um, and I think that that elevated the substance of the concerns to a level that um, you know I've worked with a lot of neighborhoods um, and that particular group of people, a lot of them have moved on of course, but stood out in my mind. Um, you know, so anyhow, and hopefully John Horster can get his corn there at some point, I, but uh, whatever. I also want to recognize and thank John Hornstra for attending the session. Um, he cares very, very deeply about Hingham, and I know this will have a good outcome next year. And, and just to follow up on Paul's point is, uh, and I, just uh, the folks, some of them are still there, by oh, the yeah. way, which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they, uh, they were very respectful. And uh, you know, from the very beginning, they were open-minded as to what might come um, or what might not come. But uh, my only hope in the future is, is that whatever is proposed is vetted in advance, which I'm sure this will be if it ever comes back and that uh, the, the concerns of the neighbors as well as the people in the town, if, if any, will be addressed. Yep. You know, I, I guess I probably saw this in the same way the advisory committee did. I saw it as a benign use. If I'm wrong, I'll stand corrected in the future if issues are raised that need to be addressed with more detail. I, th I think everything will get aired. Um, Aquarian is now involved, um, Abby made a call to the Aquarian people and they would like to have a discussion because it is so close to the wells and we're in a stressed area in that. So I, uh, this will have a good outcome and it will also have a good outcome on an ongoing process. And, and just but one that. last thing on this is, um, sure. that, uh, well, I uh, know we can keep talking about it. It's fine <laughs> okay. the, um, I did speak to the Aquarian, just I happened to see them at the um, Special Needs Athletic Partnership event um, last night at the high school, which I will say was a resounding success. There were more kids, more families, uh, and they were very happy at the outcome. And all that funds that are raised, obviously, are for a wonderful cause, just like our St. Patrick's Day event, which was the, the week before. But um, they didn't know anything about it, and uh, they were very concerned because we actually had an environmental engineer in our, happens to be one of my close neighbors, which I didn't know a profession, but um, there were some serious concerns, not only from Aquarian, who wasn't really up to speed on it, but also some of the neighbors who talked about um, 
in terms of the, the water supply, which is something I had, was concerned about as a layperson. So I, I think that we need to get all these things addressed. Um, and once we do, I think we'll have a better idea what, where to go. I agree with you completely. And in fact, I see this as an opportunity to speak to um, perhaps the need to integrate some kind of community outreach into the social networking site that we're crafting and working on developing so that um, people can say, what's going on in town? Go to this site, see what's pending, jump in if they want. Uh, today, for instance, there was a presentation by DOT on the toll lane highways. Now, I requested that that be cableized so that it was. a guy like myself who was in court could turn it on later and watch it. Um, you know, I know we can't put every meeting on cable, but I think if, you know, the opportunities come up or there's something that impacts a particular neighborhood or somebody from Crow Point's interested in cow corn up on Scotland Street, they can go. Um, you know, that, that to me is a positive. So I'd like to look at it in that lens as an opportunity to kind of develop a protocol, you know, down the road so that we don't have the, hey, nobody ever told me. Because that's something I've heard frequently over the years. Um, and typically it is published, but people just don't focus on it until the very end. And by that point, it becomes problematic, such as what happened here. And, and on the process issue, I, um, you would know better than me, but uh, I, I saw what happened here as a, as a call for not only what you're suggesting, but also maybe just a call to some of the commissions who are independent in themselves to, um, to have a more of a, a community process because um, I think something like this, when you're talking about above and beyond what is normally done for what I understand the other locations, where you're talking legislative action, where you're talking about a 10-year license, I think you really need to reach out to the community in general, in the neighborhoods in particular, and set up a process. And I know from living in Boston, which is a different world in some respects, they did require for certain projects to go forward to have a community process. And, and it, it kind of safeguarded the, the neighborhood uh, impacted most, if not the town, to make sure there was a little bit of a meeting ahead of time, which could easily be done, I think, if we, we sure. were looking at this thing months yeah. ago. So I, I agree with you, but I also, yeah. yeah, I think we could we could do a better job all around. The Conservation Commission and Abby Pearsall did commit to learning from this and having more of a community outreach in their process. So I think lots of good will come out of this, and I'm sure we'll have feed corn somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I watched the, uh, the Sewer Commission meeting and uh, Ms. Pearsall made a nice presentation on Walton's Cove, and she did talk about the community outreach that they were going to engage in down there. Beautiful. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that she arrived at that conclusion of independently of anything that happened here. I, I truly suspect that they saw this as benign and perhaps misjudged the, you know, the reaction <laughs> I would say of the neighborhood. So. <laughs> I would agree with it. it was but not in a, you know, deliberate way. I agree. I never yeah. thought it was anything intentional. I think yeah. that uh, they were well-intentioned, and, uh, you know, sometimes things don't always go as you plan, and we, you know, we all sure. work together, and we try to come to a, a result that everybody's happy with. Okay. I agree. Uh, Carol, sure. Do you want to come yeah. up? Okay. Uh, and we'll answer the questions. Yeah. Um, just as background, because I don't know if I can find it in our archives, but were you referring to um, when they were trying to do that 40B at the end of Scotland Street that never went through? There was about the five different projects having there were, lived. There were a number of different projects over the yep. years. They and never went through. Starting with a nursing home. Yeah, I mean, there, there, were, there were some initiatives there that uh, the constraints of the site um, limited you know, the reality of development up there. And I think that the owners recognized it. And in 2012, I believe, uh, the town purchased it as a result of a voted town meeting. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, do we vote to, Ted, do we vote to open the warrant? Yeah. So your votes are listed here to open the warrant for the 2015 annual town meeting to withdraw article II. Okay. Uh, use of conservation land for agricultural so purposes. Do, and to close the warrant. 
Can we do that in one vote? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because we got a couple. Paul, would you like to make sure. the vote? I'll move that we withdraw Article II as it relates to the use of conservation land for agricultural purposes from the warrant, and then to sign the warrant uh, for the 2015 annual town meeting as amended. I'll second that. Okay, so we're opening it, withdrawing the article, closing it, and then going to sign it. Did we open um, it? Um, I didn't. He did I hear you say vote to open? I didn't no. hear you say yeah. vote to open. I, I'll amend it to add that okay. language then. So you're opening it to withdraw the article, and then you're closing it. And then I'll let me do it again. I, I'll move that we. Uh, you know what? How about this? Okay. Uh, that we uh, open the warrant for the 2015 annual town meeting for the purposes of withdrawing Article 2, use of conservation land for agricultural purposes, and then to close the warrant. And just for the record, it's I.I. I.I. It I. Excuse like me. Too. Okay. Thank you. And I'll, I'll second the uh, amended motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, we have one appointment. Would you like to make that? Uh, why don't okay. you, go, you have to go through the rest now. Did oh, you vote sorry. to close the warrant? Uh, he, he did, yes. It was open and closed? It was yes. open and closed. There was no vote to sign it. Okay, so now you need to vote to oh, sign sorry. the warrant. You want to do the sign? Sure. Move to sign the warrant for 2015 annual town meeting as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. okay. And you have two appointments. Oh, okay. Do you want to do the first one? I have one here that says, uh, and I will move to appoint Thomas Burbank to the Veterans Council. Second. I, I have uh, the, the other one is um, Bill August. Do you have that too? Okay. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And uh, want to do the last I'll, one? Sure. I'll move to appoint William August as special counsel to the Cable TV Advisory Committee. Second. And maybe a little... Sure. Um, uh, Bill uh, handled the um, work for the Cable Advisory uh, Committee the last time they went into negotiations with uh, Verizon and Comcast for the franchise agreement. Um, he's uh, a little bit of a specialist in this field, um, and uh, they were very much interested in retaining him. And I've, my understanding is he went to their first meeting and is, is off and running. Yeah, I was at the first meeting. It was very nice to see him again. Um, the cable world is changed. We have about 30 months before the actual contract has to be negotiated, but believe it or not, it has to start now. So he has authorization um, uh, up to 5,000. Um, I, I asked him to give me a full budget, which I'll bring back to you so you can approve the budget and the dollar amounts. Even though we don't pay the budget, we still, as a matter of record, ask all our councils to tell ask us how much it's gonna cost. And, and Dad, when you say authorization up to 5,000, that is for what? Just in general, to start going. To get, you know, the committee wanted to meet with him before you were going to meet, so I gave him that authorization to, you know, begin whatever he needed to do to get the committee rolling. Is that for his time? Yeah. 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 Just making sure. I thought so. Yeah. Okay. So we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, can we do a couple of thank yous, even though we don't have? Ooh. Oh, good. You want to do the St. Patrick's Day because I want to do the pizza. All right. I, oh, I, hang on a minute, Jim. The from the Next week. I just made my statement this week. Well, what about the public who came to say something? Tell you what, come on up. I wasn't planning on taking any, but since you, but and you know the rules. You know the rules. Yeah, he knows the rules. Do you know the rules? I do. <laughs> just check him. Plays well in the same box. Is that is that a St. Patrick's Day favor? I don't know, it's downstairs no, it's like in the lobby. Great. I got it for nothing. Great. <laughs> huh? I came to ask uh, how far along you are in, on my issue that I brought to you folks on December 16th. I'll refer Actually, to Actually, I have the file on my desk. I was making copies. I okay. got sidetracked on the warrant. So, Mr. Clark should hear something. I'm sending the material out to you uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. Tomorrow afternoon, then. <laughs> Probably not, Jim. Well, it's that simple. <clears throat> It'll be so simple. Okay. So, Jim, It'll be tomorrow afternoon. Just so you know, I, I requested uh, the paperwork. Um, I have all the paperwork. I know you do. Anybody's it, welcome to it. No, no, but I, I, well, it may not be all the paperwork. You, have, you and I have sat down, and as soon as I get this package, which I've requested, and uh, I would have asked it after, after the meeting, because I'll have it today or tomorrow, and I'll be happy to talk to you again about it. I have tomorrow not forgotten it, about it. Tomorrow makes it reasonable. I'm around tomorrow. You can call me or we can talk, but I haven't read it yet, so I have to get it.
first. And then we'll have something to talk about. Do you have enough information, Paul? I'm west of Springfield tomorrow on a nice country. business. But um, you and I have talked about this. Make sure you come back. I'll re-review. Re I have all the legal documents if you want. Those, well, so. I mean, mm -hmm. when you say you review all the file, you're going to go back to the Grist Mill Lane subdivision and the I have Huron that Tower, my, right? On the chair over here. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of paper here. The testimony and all that stuff from the neighbors. But it sure. should be it should be simple as fact finding. It's very simple. And then it's my understanding that this has already been addressed okay. by previous boards. Okay. So I, I'll look at everything again. You because I, well, it's got nothing to do with me being a lawyer. I, I've known you. Well, I know this simple. is a problem that bugs you. I will look at it again with an open eye. It's not that it bugs me. It's just that, you know, Keep coming we have back, a town warrant article this time about people giving easements. I gave you an easement. It wasn't taken care of. Here we are today, 30 years later. Nothing's changed. Now it's going to change. Whether again. it doesn't change tomorrow, it's going to change soon. And Jim, we'll see. I spent an awful lot of money there last year, and I had to put stuff that I built there where I didn't want to put it for your second floor, and I didn't like that. And I know you wouldn't like it either. And why don't we do this? You know? We'll get, we'll bring Paul Gannon up to speed, because Jim, you and I have sat a couple times, well, and then we'll we'll come out. And check it out. We'll we'll come up with an action plan, and if we have to, we'll do it on TV. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it on TV. We are. Thank you. All right. Have a good evening. Thank you, Jim. Okay. Good now seeing you again, Jim. Now can we do some thank yous? You can do the... Just um, last Friday, um, we had the first, which I hope would be an annual St. Patrick's Day event. Um, I think I announced it in the, of the last month. We had a uh, Danny Gill and the boys of the Old Brigade we had the uh, Woods School of Irish Dance, and we, uh, we had a wonderful crowd of people come from all different areas. I, I saw sports folks, I saw some of the elderly from Lincoln coming, and they were the best dancers, by the way. Um, they came early and stayed late. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but folks all over town that either had an interest in those that didn't, that knew it was a good cause, and it, it was just uh, very um, heartwarming to see the compassion and commitment of folks in town not only for a great cause, but also the enthusiasm for celebrating a holiday that is very near and dear to my heart. So I was very, very happy that it was a successful event. Evacuation day? <laughs> well, that was the reason that they had school off when I was a kid in Boston. Yeah, I like that day. I think it's a great day. It's a great part of history. We did celebrate that country. too on, the, on that day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Fantastic day. Oh. And the other group I want to thank, because it was last night we had the Snap Pizza Palooza party. And I know I, two of us were there. I was working it and eating. We didn't see you. I don't know if you. I'm watching it. my weight. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching everybody else's weight while I ate. You're nice and thin. <laughs> um, the winners, there were 10 participants, and this was sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce. Um, the judges' winner for the blind tasting of the cheese pizza was Cafe Tosca. Kids' Choice, this is going to be a great surprise to everybody, Papa Gino's. And the People's Choice winner was the Sub Galley. So these are the 10 participants, and it was. Wall Street Pizza didn't make it in there? Uh, well, no. We had Liberty Grill, we had nice. Sub Galley, Cafe Tosca, Peel Pizza, Stone Hearth Pizza, Crow Point Pizza, South Shore Sports Center Cafe, Old Country Pizza. Papa Gino's and Boston Pizza, and the judges. That's not even on the list. <laughs> hey, he could have volunteered, but he didn't. Uh, um, the judges had to taste all ten, so check in with Dr. Gallo to find out how she did. Um, the other providers, Atlantic Bagel, donated coffee, Aquarian Water, donated water, um, and they were there. It was nice to see them. Uh, Sadie Mays did cupcakes, and we had one cute little kid who said that Officer Ramsey and Officer Ford were seen eating cop cakes. Get it? And Nona's, and Nona's for ice cream, and I have to say I started off with Nona's just to make sure there was going to be room, and it went downhill from there. So we want to thank everybody. They raised about $7,000. There were also an incredible number of raffle items. The 
the merchants were very, very generous. Um, there, there'll be some pictures up on Facebook, but really great time had by all, lots and lots of volunteers. And this was one that it was really good to be a worker there. <laughs> I have a couple things. Uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, I have a, uh, an acknowledgement, an update, and a reflection. Uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Ms. Foley on her oh. status as a grandmother. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's always a very happy time in anyone's life. I can attest to that personally. Um, nice, healthy boy. That's correct. Uh, Eight pounds. Nice. Very good. Um, Update-wise, uh, the South Hingham Working Group met on Tuesday night. And uh, we continue to uh, work through. I try to sit there as quietly as I can because I want the creative juices of uh, this board, and they are very creative, uh, speaking to the issues. The stakeholders are present in the conversation. It's a very positive, uh, constructive dialogue. Um, you know, we're, we're mindful of, of all the interests up there, including the neighborhood and the potential impacts. Uh, and we continue to examine the, the traffic issues. Uh, there, <coughs> excuse me. There is a um, a hearing scheduled for early May on the 25 percent, um, but DOT with respect to the Derby Street project <coughs> that will be in the evening at Town Hall. So I'd urge you to come um, because I think it'll add to your understanding of what's going on there. <coughs> and the last thing is a, a reflection of something that happened before I was born. <coughs> March 26, 1945. Um, anybody here know what that date means? Iwo Jima. Hurrah. Um, that battle started <coughs> on February 19, 1945, and it officially ended um, today. 70 years ago, uh, 5th Marine Division um, assault on an island, 22,000 Japanese soldiers. You know, when they were done, there were uh, about 200 of them left. Uh, it was a vicious battle, um, and perhaps one of the most famous photographs in American history was taken there. Um, I had the pleasure of going to um, Harlingen, Texas. Now, why would I be in Harlingen, Texas? It's at the bottom of the uh, state. And that is where the original statue uh, made by Felix de Weldon is located. The one at Arlington Ridge in Washington, D.C. Uh, is, is identical in every respect except for one. The, um, the boulder relief uh, on the bottom or the base of the statue uh, was originally made of gypsum. So it had to be put in a place where rain did not come, and it ended up down in Harlingen. And there's a small um, museum there, and inside that museum is a, uh, a, a topographic map made of natural rubber, uh, which is to scale. It was the original battle map used by the 5th Marines. Um, why am I telling you all this stuff? Well, I, to me, you know, the history of our country uh, is formed by these events and our identity as a people is shaped by them. So I, I didn't want this time to pass without uh, acknowledging the significant sacrifice of the Marines who fought there. So uh, with that, I wish you good night. And the button from the 4th of July parade that has um, the I Iwo Jima Memorial on it and Mount Sarabachi, kind of the outline. So it's, it's a lovely button. They were beginning to sell them last night. And I'm sure we're going to see them a lot. So I'll get a few of those. Well, I want to thank you because, um, in, in a lover of history, um, I was not not familiar with the matchup of the date and today. So um, this is going to put you on the spot. We're going to expect more of this in the future. <laughs> and we're going well, to check. I'll, I'll tell you. This also represents the last battle fought by Robert E. Lee at Fort Stedman, where he Grant repelled him and collapsed his army, leading to his defeat at Appomattox or his surrender. Uh, so it's a big day in history, but Iwo Jima by far and away eclipses it all. 27 medals of honor. And, and one last thing, um, sh shifting gears, I want to thank the staff 
in our office and anybody else that, um, and I know there were many folks that came before us for their assistance and cooperation in getting to this point in the, with the Warren Office. Oh, right. um, yes, appreciate all I echo that. that. This is heroic this year in no <laughs> uncertain terms. And we're still moving, moving targets. We're still upright. <laughs> okay, I'll take a motion. To adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you next week.